<coughs> so this this uh, gib, there's in uh, Connolly's uh, machine tool reconditioning book, they they describe two different methods for how to scrape in a gib. And one is you actually use the two mating surfaces and the parts on the machine, and you just continually um, put the gib in, tap it in lightly, and you work both sides at the same time. The second method is, which is what I'm doing, is I'm taking the this side here would be on the knee, the moving uh, part. Um, so this contacts the knee and doesn't actually move, whereas the back side is the one with the oil grooves. That's the one that would be moving. So what I'm doing is just using a surface plate, spotting this in, and um, getting this. I don't know that I'm going to go for uh, flat and bearing quality all at once on this side, but I'm going to get it flat. Um, and then start the process of bringing in the moving side. This has been about uh, probably about six cycles at this point, and uh, hopefully that's showing up. Starting to see, you know, both good coverage. The spot through here that's not being spotted, a spot that's not being spotted yet, and you know, this is starting to break up a little bit. The idea is everything all arrives at the same. Um, geometry and bearing quality all at the same time so all the blue <coughs> all the blue needs to be worked down in order to get this to come in and uh, this being a non moving surface I think the book calls out for only a, only four or five spots per square inch so this is uh, uh, a few more spots than required for this surface, but uh, it's always good to work uh, in preparation for the surface that you need to be 15 or 20 spots per square inch. So this is now probably since that last video and pictures I shot probably about six, maybe seven cycles and uh, It's coming in nicely. This is uh, plenty, you know, there's a few spots that I need to break up yet, but plenty good enough quality for this connection that this makes. The only thing left is you can see the, I think these things are Blanchard ground, I bought it. I think they're Blanchard ground or something like that, and then, so you can just, you can just see that little spot there that's still. Uh, rough machining marks so I'm thinking maybe three or four more cycles and we should be
pretty close. Um, close enough that I want to start fitting it in the actual uh, joint to make sure that both sides, uh, that we have the right taper and both sides are coming in. It's important that, uh, you, you know, this is sticking out about three inches. It comes with the groove. I didn't like that. I thought it was coming as a blank, but it was about three inches sticking out, so there's only enough material to take off to slide the gib in about three inches, and then you're uh, buying a new one. This is the uh, the non-bearing uh, surface side of the uh, of the gib, which goes on the outside of the knee. And what I'm working on now is the um, the sliding side of the gib. So the dovetail is blued up, and um, what you do is this goes in, and then by pushing that in, the book actually says to tap it a bit into place. Um, so by tapping that in place you're spotting the moving side of it. Just a little bit, just to get it the seat in there. And then you gotta you gotta tap it out the other way. And starting to see some spotting there. Now we just got to keep scraping that until we get a good bearing quality on that. So there, uh, that's that's the whole give, and that's the that's the second uh, spotting that I've done on this side. Um, this is the uh, the sliding side, and uh, it's got the oil grooves in there. So I'm just going to scrape that, and then um, what you what you're working towards is this being the thick end. This is the groove where the adjusting um, screw goes in. So we're trying to move that closer to its final position. But if I do arrive at a good quality surface across the whole thing here. Um, with enough engagement of the gib and there's still you know even if there was still an inch left hanging the procedure calls out for um, actually cutting off that excess portion of the uh, blank and putting a groove in so you know so you're not scraping and scraping and scraping to get this far enough in. Once you arrive at a good quality bearing surface, that's that's really the goal. And then you adjust your you adjust your adjustment position at that point. Just uh <clears throat> just uh, doing a little bit of scraping here that I'd videotape it. One of, the th one of the things that I thought I would do just to uh, help 
the process here. Again, this is the uh, this is the backside um, of the gib that goes up against the knee, which doesn't move. It's not a sliding surface, but this one here is the sliding contact that I'm trying to scrape in right now. And so this this is two cycles spotting on the actual part. So what I thought I would do now is just do some spotting on the surface plate just to um, help to make sure everything is um, flat. It's kind of a good reference point that you know if you have the ability to put the part on a, on a uh, known surface um, it helps to kind of ensure that what you're spotting on the part on the mating surfaces is accurate so I'm just going to uh, just under its own weight I'm just kind of and I'm not too worried uh, I'm going to I'm just going to lightly scrape whatever I get from this reading I'm just going to lightly scrape what I get from this reading just uh, as a sanity check, right? So very, very similar to what I got on the fixed side. So on this cycle I'm going to scrape that and then we'll go back into the, uh, into the, uh, the way. I'm not sure if it's showing up or not. This is the uh, gib for the knee. And uh, yeah, I think you should be able to see it there in that light. This is the downside to 50 degree weather in January up here. A lot of moisture comes in, and when stuff is cold, that's what happens. So I just uh, spent the last little bit here getting the ways on the knee and the column all cleaned up again. I'm sprayed down now so uh, as we um, you know get ready to start doing some bluing again then I gotta clean the ways all off put some uh, uh, way lube on them and then the bluing on the uh, column on the gib side there so but for now Tonight's project was just to get them all cleaned back up and uh, sprayed up so they don't rust anymore. After I clean that rust off that gib, I thought, uh, I thought I'd just film a uh, cycle. So I've been, most of my scraping has been with the gib in position with the knee on the column, but uh, every once in a while I just do like a verification step. So this is a granite with some bluing on it, and I got a I got a roller here, and this this blue on this granite has been here for probably two weeks now, and I just keep working it and working it. You know, as you start out with your initial scrapings, you want to have a lot of bluing to act almost as a, a buffer slash lubricant between the granite and the in the, in the piece until you start to get a flat surface through your scraping and then as you scrape you want the bluing to get less and less and less and I'm not sure if it's showing up in the camera or not but it's it becomes translucent like you can see the pattern of the uh, granite in in the bluing So now the gib, we got all the rust cleaned off. I just did uh, a little bit of uh, scotch bright pad and then a stone, and you got to clean it off really, really good. And the thing with the bluing is, if you were to add more bluing in here, it would completely change the spotting on the part, and sometimes that's not good. 
it can throw you for a loop and have you start scraping in places you don't need to be. So and I'm not putting any really downward pressure on that at all. I'm just allowing that to float. And right now this this gib is probably two or three inches too long at this point. It's a It's getting close.